All right, so today's video is gonna be revolving around moving one server to another, but one that's with a different provider on a whole different system to one over here. So uh, I'm gonna be taking a Amazon Web Services one that I'm gonna just basically remote into, take its server, push it over to uh, the today's video sponsor, which is UpCloud. So you can use these instructions to do it with any provider because they're using Linux commands. We're just gonna be using rsync to really sync them over. I'm gonna kinda do some of the prerequisites and then also talk about some of the complications you might run into while using this method. But uh, let's get on the desktop, show the entire transfer, what I do for the actual setup and prep process, and then some of the complications I ran into during this process and that you might run into depending on how your server's set up. So let's get into it. Okay, so I have another server basically sitting on the opposite end of the United States. And I want to take that virtual private server and copy it into UpCloud, which is a new server I'm setting up. It's with a different provider and everything. So I can't just say, hey, move it to a different data center. So we're going to deploy an identical server. So I'm going to go ahead and pick San Jose in California. We'll do about $20 a month server. I think I have about $25 worth of credit with UpCloud. Uh, if you follow the link in the description, you can also get $25 worth of credit. With this, we'll do 80 gigs. I'm moving about 56 gigs of data as it is a pretty sizable Minecraft server that I currently have. It is Ubuntu 18. When you do a full-on copy of a move of, v of VPS, you want to make sure the operating system is obviously identical to what uh, you are there. So we have that IPv6 support. I don't care about. I'm just going to go ahead uh, and say no to that. I'll probably just add another SSH key here in the future. But for now, we'll do that. So right now, we're going to just say uh, Minecraft UpCloud is what we'll call this. And we'll leave that description the same and deploy it. Okay. Now the server is gonna starting deployment. This usually takes maybe 30 seconds to you know a minute, depending on whatever provider you're choosing. With UpCloud is pretty darn fast. Now if we click into the server, you can kind of see what all is going on. Start. It is now started and has been created. We get our little password here. We'll copy this as we will be needing to use this. And uh, let's go ahead and scroll down some more, just overviewing the configuration as it's really important to do that. Uh, now, the next thing I like to do is also look at the console. We can open up a direct console connection. Should there be something wrong with it, we can basically remote in and, and fix whatever it is. Um, that looks all good. Resize, you can resize and change the server. Backups, set up simple backups. Uh, where it does daily backups for the seven days. You can do seven days and four weeks. So that gives you a, a month of backups, which is nice. And that's kind of nice. They make it super simplistic here. And this is the firewall you'd actually do. Uh, we'll actually enable the firewall and we will open up SSH and uh, log into it via that. So right now, obviously outgoing rules, SMTP blocked, that, that's just for mail. So that's just a normal rule. Pretty much every provider out there blocks port 25, by the way. That's just one of those things. So incoming traffic rules, let's go ahead and create one for SSH, any address. Uh, I could usually limit this down is usually how I do. So let's, uh, I'll grab my actual IP address and put it in here to kind of limit uh, what is happening. All right, I'm going to paste my IP in here. So what I'm doing out of this section is I'm putting and saying, hey, only my IP can connect through port 22. Now, while some people will call this semi-secure, I still don't consider this secure. I would still like to do SSH keys, which I, I should go ahead and do, but I don't want to do it in this video as it will make it longer. So I'm going to go ahead and hit forward. This just kind of puts some kind of protections on an open SSH scenario like this. But now that the server's set up, we have everything, let's go ahead, go over and SSH directly into this brand new box. So we'll go ahead and go back to our servers page. We'll copy the external IP, which is this right here. And we'll come into here, SSH into this IP. Now, obviously, we're going to have to connect probably as root. So we'll do that. It'll prompt for the password. And uh, I'll grab that password. 
Okay, and now we are logged into our UpCloud server instance. Uh, very first thing I always do anytime I log in is just do an APT, update, and upgrade. So I'll do update. This goes through, updates all the stuff as before you do any kind of transfer, one, make sure it's the same system. The other Minecraft servers, uh, Ubuntu 18, and this Minecraft server is gonna be Ubuntu 18. But before I do any kind of transfer, I'll log into this system, do an APT upgrade and update, and then I'll do the same. That one, it's sitting on the same kernel. Everything's just kind of identical. So it makes it to where when I pull over all the files, it just kind of mirrors everything that's going on with the system. So very important to do. I just, I, I can't emphasize that enough. All right, now we're all finished. Obviously with a kernel update, we'll go ahead and give it a reboot. So this server is gonna be rebooting and now I can actually remote into the other Minecraft server and uh, grab those files and, and start to actually sync this up. So I will actually update that one right now and then come back to the screen and we'll remote back into our Minecraft server. All right, so we now have both servers emulating each other on the same version. Now we need to do an rsync, but the rsync command is very long, so I highly recommend doing it through a file. So if we do a listing here, um, I am logged into my Minecraft server. We're going to just go ahead and do nano rsync.sh. And this is the upcloud version that we just created, and this is the command I'm using. Now, this uh, I'll go ahead and put all this in the description as far as what each one is, like the archiving, compressing, all the, the actual triggers here at the beginning. Now this is one hyphen right here, and then it's one hyphen again, and then we're doing SSH with dash I, which means identity file. This is the SSH private key file that we're passing through so we authenticate via SSH. No password authentication. This is key based to get to that Minecraft server because it is a secure server. And then we start with the actual excludes and other things. Now, all these are dash dash. So dash dash, numeric IDs, dash dash exclude. And we're excluding FSTAB, network, uh, processes, temporary files, boot folders, uh, system files, devices, mount points. All these things we don't want to take from the old server to the new server. But everything else we do. So we're going to go ahead and leave it all. And we'll do the source right here at the end after we've done the dashes. It's going to be just the source, which is the source, which is a root star, which means everything. And the destination is the root of this server. Now, um, we can do a dash dash progress, I believe. Let's go ahead and put that in here. We'll write that out. And then we'll just do an shrsync.sh. Now, with this, we should see all the files transfer from the old Minecraft server to the new one. VPS, VPS, completely remote. So we're remoted into our upcloud server and away we go. So we're re receiving the incremental list um, and this is gonna run for some time as this is 50 gigs of data we're transferring. Um, so this portion of the file, I'm gonna go ahead and cut and then bring you back after this goes. This may probably take between one and two hours I imagine. So it's about 5.20 now. I'm going to go eat some dinner and come back afterwards and let you know the progress. All right. So we're about at a little over an hour later. It transferred about 16 megs a second, which is not bad considering all the throttling going on on the internet right now. Um, overall, for 60 gigs, transfer, all that, about an hour, I'm pretty happy with. So let's go ahead and reboot this server, our upcloud server. We just transferred all of that data to. Now this did programs, everything. So cross your fingers and see what we get. And I can already tell there's a problem with this because I also transferred all my SSH keys over as well. So when you get a permission denied because my other server was secured with SSH, SSH keys, it transferred a whole configuration and we'll put an identity file of Minecraft from our SSH folder that's local. And we'll go ahead and now do root at 152.44.44.148, our external IP. So this is actually authenticating using the SSH key that I have on file. Let's see if this works. And it looks like we've locked up there, so I'll go ahead and cancel out. Um, 
I think at this point we might need to go through the console connection from UpCloud, but let's try it one more time, just because you just never know. Hot dog, there it is. It did work. Um, now I'm curious, let's do a uh, disk free, just to see what we're working with. This was an 80 gig system, you see it's using 57 gigs now. Uh, let's go ahead and take this IP, external IP, and I'm gonna try and log in with it. And sure enough, uh, I can already see this portion is up. And that's basically it for the transfer process. For most situations, it does make a pretty good copy. So uh, a good example of this is in this video, uh, I was using the MC user and that MC user actually went ahead and copied all the users, it copied all the passwords, copied even my SSH keys, all that came over perfectly. It was just some services that were specifically assigned to a certain user that uh, did not copy properly. So those are the, some of the little shenanigans that you can run into. But I wanted to show this one, um, which had complications just because uh, to explain some of these along the way. Chances are, depending on what you're doing, if you're just doing an Apache server and you're just taking it from one place to another, this is a perfect way of doing it as you're not gonna run into any issues uh, with Apache mostly running as root user and uh, or just being assigned WW data. Very simple as far as the file permission. So in business, I usually don't have any issues moving one server from, let's say, AWS to Google or UpCloud or any other provider out there. I just kind of wanted to go ahead and make this video just to kind of showcase a server to server transfer. So if you're stuck on a big expensive provider, you can easily move to something more affordable and uh, you can take these instructions and apply them anywhere because it's not using any proprietary tools. It's not using any uh, tool that's developed by certain providers. Some cloud providers do offer migration services, but these are usually expensive and uh, you know, Doing some of that, it can be a little bit troublesome. And I wanted to just explain the technical back end. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.